And uh, well, in case you're joining us now on Morning Express today and throughout the day, it is U.S. Uh, elections uh, 2016 and America decides and uh, well joining me now to have uh, that conversation as we said the pace is Andrew Franklin who is an analyst good morning and good to have you good morning Michael. thank you for coming in this early it's great and of course it's been um, <coughs> well uh, mentioned as one of the most polarized uh, 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 presidential elections in the US do you agree with that yes I do I think that uh, this, this kind of election has developed has shown a split in the United States, very deep uh, and rather uh, surprising, mm -hmm. uh, and probably the, the most polarizing election since 1964, when Barry Goldwater of Arizona ran against Lyndon Baines Johnson, who had been John F. Kennedy's vice president, and who, of course, became president when JFK was assassinated. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you, why do you think it's been that uh, polarized, this compared to the rest? And, and, and especially given that the last election we had Barack Obama, the first black president who had a chance and became, or rather uh, the two last elections, uh, one would have expected that maybe would have been more polarized than this. Oh, no, not at all. I think that uh, Senator McCain in 2008 it was a very different candidate mm. than uh, is Donald Trump. Uh, Senator McCain is a conservative Republican, senator from Arizona, uh, former prisoner of war of the communists in Vietnam for five and a half years, uh, but had a great deal of civility. And uh, other than his, his choice of Sarah Palin as, uh, as his vice presidential candidate, mm -hmm. uh, represented mainstream republicanism. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the fact is that when John McCain lost fair and square to, Senate, to Barack Obama, uh, he conceded the election with grace. Right. And when members of the crowd began to boo Barack Obama, John McCain said, no, no, he, he won. And Barack Obama very graciously accepted John McCain's uh, uh, concession and also said something very, very uh, important about how John McCain suffered for the United States and went through things that none of us, including Barack Obama, could understand, right. spending five and a half years in a prisoner of war camp mm -hmm. after being shot down. Uh, even the 2012 elections, uh, Romney, uh, who is a, another mainstream conservative Republican, actually from the East, although a Mormon, uh, never, never degenerated into this sort of, uh, of, uh, of mudslinging. But also, I think that uh, the, the lack of, of genuine policy discussion during this uh, election cycle mm -hmm gives the wrong impression about elections for the whole world, about if, if the United States is the beacon of democracy, is, if the ex, is one of the exemplars right. of how to it's run to the epitome have of a, democracy. Well, it's well. not the epitome so much because we have 50 states. Right. You know, every state runs its own mm -hmm. affairs, mm -hmm. pretty much. We have, we've had devolution since uh, day one. Uh, and uh, as a result, but it gives the impression that you can get away during an election without having to discuss anything of substance. Mm -hmm. I mean, Donald Trump has not discussed anything of substance. Mm -hmm. In terms uh, of policy. Do you think this is mainly because of the two, um, the characters of, of, of who we have as the main contenders, the two horse races, as it were, given that Donald Trump, especially at the beginning, uh, was dismissed as one who's just probably having a good time, but uh, surprisingly uh, gained momentum, and he still seems to be, be gaining momentum? Well, the thing is, during the uh, primary season, you get the more committed voters who, who actually make an effort to get to the polls. So during the Republican primaries, he was facing a very, a very big field. I think it was 14, 15 other candidates, all of whom, uh, I guess, now represent the mainstream of conservative Republicanism. Mm -hmm. Many, a number of senators. Uh, and so they were dividing the uh, primary voters, the Republican primary voters. And uh, the base, Donald Trump's base, kept coming out and voting for him. And of course, uh, he kept doing things that were, <clears throat> that were not necessarily normal for a, can a candidate in a race. Not conventional. Not conventional at all. Very personalized uh, attacks on, on Senator Marco Rubio, for example. And then they began reacting to him, discussing his small hands. Right. Or Marco Rubio's penchant for uh, having to drink water. Right. While he's speaking. Mm -hmm. Ted Cruz, having been born in, in Canada and, and, uh, uh, and whether he's a citizen or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it became more of a personal attack. Person to all, person it was, as it became to all policy. personalized. And mm -hmm. of course, uh, 
the other candidates reacted that way because, <clears throat> after all, Trump is a reality television right. uh, star, if you will. He's, he uh, was more of a Democrat in the 1980s. He's never come across as a, a right-wing Republican conservative, uh, anti-abortion. Mm. These are things that, uh, you know, as a New York real estate developer and as then a television reality show star, these are things that he never really mentioned. And in fact, most of his friends, that's why we see pictures of uh, Donald Trump with Bill and Hillary Clinton. Mm. It's the same group of people, same class of people moving in the same circles. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that the elections were dumbed down uh, this year as well. Mm -hmm. Very, What's that? You know, it's, it's all sound bites now. And I think a lot of that has to do with uh, our 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week mm -hmm. cable news cycle and the, uh, the, the multiplication of news uh, shows and news channels. Right. And they are also, some of the news uh, shows, so-called so news channels, are overtly partisan. Mm -hmm. Fox News, for example. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, one would have thought it ridiculous for somebody with the tone that uh, Donald Trump has had all along. And this is not just after he started vying for president. Even before, he was very uh, brash and, uh, you know, literally very unconventional. Um, but here we are today discussing him as one of uh, a potential president of the United States, 44th president of the United States. What do you think that represents when it comes to the electorate? What is the electorate saying when they choose somebody like Donald Trump, despite the fact the world would never have imagined that he'd be president? Well, the world doesn't live in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, uh, the, the electorate that will be voting for Donald Trump is angry. It's uh, not happy with what it, the perception of where America is going or has gone. <clears throat> it's obviously not focusing on economics, on economic uh, recovery. Right. In fact, uh, I, I also blame uh, the ability, uh, you know, the Facebook type of generation or the Twitter generation. Social media generation. The social media generation, and obviously I must not be there. But the fact is you can get, uh, you can become famous or infamous in, in no time at all. Right. And things can go up. Uh, and get out and get out to the public that have no basis in fact and be, and yet by the time they are debunked people believe them mm. and uh, which is which is not abnormal except that it happens much faster now right and the effect is global that's why we're sitting here in Nairobi eight hours uh, ahead mm. of the east coast of the United States discussing American elections right <clears throat> okay so looking now at uh, Hillary Clinton Again, uh, she also has a lot of baggage that she brings on board. And it looks to me, and I don't know what your thoughts are, uh, like Americans are choosing between who has less confidence.